Hi, in this video we're going to take a quick look at a question that came up following one of the courses recently and it regards uh, a fairly common but rather mundane task that you'd have to do as a bioinformatician which is to rename a bunch of files. We want to see if we can do that using the tools in the shell. So the setup uh, I've recreated here on my laptop, you have a directory with a bunch of subdirectories in it and each of these subdirectories represents a sample that's been sequenced uh, on the Illumina sequencer. So if I use the tree command instead of ls I can see down into those directories and I can see each sample directory contains two fastq files uh, number one and number two because this was a paired end sequencing run. Um, the, the actual name of the file that comes back from the sequencing center uh, from the Edinburgh Genomics uh, data delivery is this rather long and um, meaningless thing to most people that contains information about the uh, the sequencing run that produced the read. But what we really care about for analysis is the sample that was sequenced. So we want to rename these files, um, take them out into a single subdirectory and give them names that incorporate the, uh, the sample name uh, rather than this uh, string which is to do with the sequencing. So uh, let's have a look how to do that. We're going to use a loop in the shell. Um, and so the first thing is we'll just construct a rather generic loop and see if we can get a loop that goes around all these file names. So uh, standard shell loop syntax, you start off by typing for, then a variable. I'll just use f because these are file names, so f for file name, um, in, and then I want to match all those fastq.gz files. Uh, then after the list of things in your loop, you always have a semicolon and the keyword do, so I'll type that. Uh, and then for now, I'm just going to print the file name. So I'll just do echo dollar f to get the value of f. And that's it, so semicolon and done. So when I run this loop, um, uh, the, the loop syntax is right, but it hasn't quite done what I hope because um, I've used this glob pattern and uh, the star in glob patterns can't match down through multiple directories. Uh, but what some people who uh, might not know is that while you can't use a single star to match down through multiple directories, you can have more than one wildcard in your glob pattern. So I can say star slash star dot gz and the first star will match the directory and the second star will match this part of the file name. And so this actually prints out all the fastq files for me. Um, I can be a little bit more specific because I know all my fastq files end in underscore one or two so I can say um, I can give a uh, put this in the pattern to be more explicit but uh, here because these are the only files um, it's not really there's no not really much point anyway so uh, I have my loop and it's printing out the file names so now uh, I want to do uh, two things I want to rename them based on the sample name and I also want to put them all into a single directory now actually in uh, the Linux shell, moving and renaming is basically the same operation. They're both done by the nv command. And so I'm just going to do both of these at the same time. And I want to generate uh, a, a single mv command uh, that will process each of these file names. Um, so uh, in order to do that, I'm going to have to chop the first bit, which is the sample name, and the last bit, which is the extension. Very important as I keep my underscore ones and underscore twos to keep track of my paired end sequencing. Um, so I've got to chop these bits out to construct a new file name. And the shell gives you various features for chopping up bits of strings. So let's just have a play with those before putting them back into the loop. Now, because I ran the loop uh, using the variable f, even though the loop has finished, um, f still ends up being set to the last value the shell doesn't clean it up, so I can make use of that. I can echo back $f, which is the same as the last line that printed here. And now I want to get this first bit, so that's the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters of the file name. And I can do this using syntax, which is f colon zero, meaning start at uh, the first character, but um, computers tend to count from zero, so it's the zeroth character up to the eighth character. And you'll see that, yes, this prints out the first eight characters, which is indeed the sample name. Now, th this works in this case, but it's not 
exactly ideal because what if my sample names were different lengths? What I really want is not the first eight characters, but I want everything up to the first forward slash. And this is also quite simple to do. Um, you can use the uh, percentage operator in the shell to chop bits off the end of strings. So if I type F percent, and the thing I want to chop off is the forward slash and everything after the forward slash. So forward slash and star, just like in glob patterns, the star matches any amount of characters. So echo F percent forward slash star also gives me the sample name, but it's done it by chopping off the forward slash rather than just by counting characters. So what about the end bit? Well, the end bit is a fixed length. Um, it's always underscore one or underscore two dot fast q dot gz, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven characters. So to get the last eleven characters of the string, again, I could start counting from the start, and what's that about thirty or so, forty characters in? But I can also count backwards. So I can ask for the 11th character from the end, or in shell speak, that's the minus 11th character of the string. Um, and I want to go right the way to the end, so I don't need a second number, I just need f colon minus 11. And that gives me the underscore 2.fastq.gz. Um, now you'll notice I put a space in between the colon and the minus, and you actually have to do that because if you don't, then the shell interprets it slightly differently and I won't get it, go into why, but you get this uh, result, which isn't what we want. So we can now chop off the start of the string, which is the sample name, and the end of the string, which is the extension. So it's time to go back to our loop, which was, I went past it. Uh, it was this one, this was the loop uh, that goes through all the file names. And so instead of just echoing $f, I'm going to echo move uh, $f2 and then I take the two parts of my string that I worked out before which is the first bit and the extension bit, the second bit. Okay, so again running this loop isn't going to do anything because it's just running an echo command but actually it's going to print out all the move commands that would move these fastq files to a new name. And in order to actually make that happen, all I do, all I need to do is delete the echo and the quotes, and I'll I'll have the job done. But I'm going to do something uh, subtly different. Um, I'm not actually going to move the files. I'm going to make symlinks to them. And uh, the reason I would do that if I was processing this data is that it's just generally a bad idea if you've got a file with a kind of um, a, a, a meaningful name for the file, especially if that file was obtained from somewhere else or given to you by someone else, uh, that it's best generally not to rename the file if you can avoid it, because then you get, can get confused about whether two files are the same or where they came from. Or in this case, if you did another sequencing run on the same samples, uh, then having a file with just the sample name um, wouldn't necessarily uh, tell you exactly what which file that was, because you could have two um, two sequencing runs for the same sample. So for that reason, using symlinks um, instead of renaming the files allows me to have aliases that work just like there were files there, but there'll be links and they'll point back to the original files so I can see exactly where they came from. So uh, to do this, I'm going to make myself a, a directory called symlinks, just to keep everything kind of neat and tidy. So if I make that directory and then go back to my loop command, then instead of mv, I'm going to do ln, which makes symlinks. I want symlinks, so it's minus s. Um, I want the relative paths to be resolved, so I'll type r. And I'm also going to use the n parameter. It doesn't make much uh, difference here, it doesn't make any difference here, but n uh, just avoids um, dereferencing that can make the m commands ambiguous in some cases, so I just get into the habit of using it whenever I'm scripting the ln command. So ln minus s r n and finally v, uh, v will just give me a verbose output, so it's going to print the symlinks as it makes them, um, and remove the final quote, and this is now my final loop, so it's going to uh, go through all the files and make a symlink with the new name. Oh, and what did I say? I was going to put it in the symlinks directory. 
So I'll make sure I do that. And yep, when I run this, it gives me a list and it's telling me it's making all these uh, files under symlinks and I can ls them. Yep, that's all what I wanted. And just to completely reassure myself, if I do ls minus l on the symlinks directory, well, it's wrapped around the screen a bit, but it's showing me all the links and that they point back to my original files. So that's how to rename files using the shell. There are of course other ways to do this, but um, I think the loop uh, does a perfectly good job. So I'm ready to do some analysis and uh, cheers. <laughs>